So now in this video, we're going to quickly put together a current source using an NPN bipolar junction transistor. So this is the 2N2222, a very common NPN bipolar junction transistor. With this particular circuit, any NPN transistor should work. Uh, it should be in probably the same package and uh, ideally the, the same pin layout, but it may not be the same pin layout, especially if it's not starting with 2N. So just be aware of that. But in any case, we're going to start off with our trim pot. So there you can see we have 12 volts at the rail. So other than the how warm the components are going to get, the voltage at the rail is not terribly important. We're going to use a trim pot to set a voltage lower than the power source voltage. And so we will look at that. I already set it to about uh, 4.7 volts pretty much spot on. So we can take that measurement there and you can see about 4.7 volts right there. Now we need to add the uh, transistor to that now. So we're really interested in that 4 volts. You can see here that uh, flat side looking at us the left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base and the right pin is the collector. So we're going to turn it this way like that. So we're going to put the middle pin, the base to where that voltage is that we just measured coming out of the trim pot. So we could set that to 5.7, 6.7, whatever. The closer we get to 12 volts though, the less effective it's gonna be. So four uh, volts is pretty good, 4.7. We got that there. That's because we're gonna have a diode drop when it comes to the voltage from base to emitter right there. And we can kind of get a sense of that by uh, measuring that voltage right now. So it drops more voltage as current rises though. That's the main thing to be aware of. But there you can see it's about 4.4 .4 there because practically no current's going through the meter. It's just a very small trickle and so the, the diode drop there is uh, nowhere near as effective as when we have current actually going through here uh, significantly. significantly. So there you can see about 4.7 plus a, a diode drop. So now we're going to take a 1 kilo ohm resistor and this is very important because for every volt across a one kilo ohm resistor, you get one milliamp of current going through that. And that's actually what's going to be setting the uh, current in this circuit, as uh, we will see coming up. So we got it there. Now we can't measure the voltage accurately like this. So we will uh, measure it now, go in there, because you can see the trim pot's most of the way towards the negative rail. This resistor also goes to the negative rail. That's pulling the voltage down here even more than what we have set at the trim pot and the diode drop. And so we can't count on that. Now, once we have current going from collector to emitter though, there'll be a lot more current going through the uh, resistor and it will build up to about the uh, voltage that we set there minus the diode drop and it will be more accurate. So now we can set the meter to measure uh, current. It'll be in the milliamps. This particular meter, the red probe can just stay there because you can see milliamps there. The only time we need to move the red probe for this one is higher currents right there. And we expect four milliamps of current going from, let's see if I can get this without getting in the way. So there's the positive rail. Now we'll go up to the collector. And there you can see pretty much spot on 4 milliamps of current. So I'm touching the collector up there. And luckily the uh, power supply here looks like it's pretty accurate with this too. So it's only measuring in the amp range but it goes down to the thousandths. So about four thousandths of an amp, 4 milliamps up there. So I'm touching the uh, top pin up there. So that one does okay. Now. That is without uh, any load. And so we're going to add an LED. So usually there's a voltage drop, or there's a voltage drop, and a little bit of resistance. But luckily, with uh, this particular circuit, so if I measure without the LED, by uh, skipping the LED, of course it's still four, and if I add the LED, you'll see the LED light up. It's the exact same current right there. So it's regulating the current. It's letting whatever voltage uh, build up that it needs to, to get a certain amount of current flowing. Now we will go over here and do uh, the same thing. We added another LED, so you'll see both of them. They're in series. They're not parallel. That's up one more. 
and uh, you can see that LED also lights up right there. Now we can take a green jumper, go to the positive rail there. I mentioned this before that uh, well there is current going through the collector to emitter will get a voltage buildup across this resistor now which is what is actually setting the uh, 4 milliamps because we are at 4 volts and we can take that voltage measurement right now across the resistor and there you can see it's 4 volts so the transistor is doing whatever it has to to hold 4 volts across the uh, resistor because we have 4.7 volts at uh, the rail or at the uh, base right there so 4.7 dropping down just a little bit because we have uh, a little bit more current going through but in uh, any case we set the voltage minus the 0.7 volt drop with the trim pot and based on the resistor we use we'll get a certain amount of current since this is one kilo ohm 1000 ohms it'll be one thousandth the current of the uh, voltage we applied minus the diode drop so now that was with a one kilo ohm resistor so since I cut the scene right now first we'll take a look that we have four volts across the one kilo ohm resistor and I'm going to yank that out and get it out of the way we're gonna grab a 510 ohm resistor you're gonna see the LEDs are brighter and so we will look now and see it's still holding four volts really nicely now I can yank uh, this jumper set the meter to measure milliamps so when you measure current you have to complete the circuit through the meter so we're just doing the same thing that jumper did but it's uh, jumping through the meter too so that it can measure the uh, current and uh, right there you can see it's pretty much uh, spot on 8 milliamps looks a little bit shy I'll skip one of the LEDs it's holding really steady right there now I'll skip the other one this is a direct connection to the collector that's why neither LED is lit up that uh, top pin there the uh, jumper and there you can see this current is holding steady so it is a current source in the sense that you get a set amount of current in this case from the positive rail to the collector now it's actually we think of current coming here so it's actually sinking into the transistor so it's more technical to call this a current sink but usually whenever you have a set amount of current you, you still call it a current source that seems to be uh, more common so uh, both current sink is more uh, correct technically but people use current source all the time so if you say that they'll probably understand what you mean still so in any case that's really all there is to this circuit we used half the resistance we got twice the current and as the load changed it still held steady so now if we had the load start demanding a lot more and uh, let's actually let's do that let's turn this up to probably we'll go back to the one kilo ohm resistor so we expect one milliamp per volt we will go here and so I have the meter set to measure voltage actually let's get the resistor out of the way and because remember it sucks it down so there we got about uh, 8.59 so almost 8.7 that works pretty good and so we expect about 8 milliamps of current through the uh, transistor but uh, we're getting somewhat close to the voltage of the power supply of 12 volts and we can see that there so we got the 12 now we got the current going through and so that's the current going through the uh, diode and the resistor but as we get uh, current coming from uh, the collector there then it builds up across the resistor and the the voltage uh, goes up less current will flow but there you can see we have about eight milliamps of current flowing through there that's uh, what we expected because we set the trim pot to almost 8.7 right there and so now we'll add an LED and uh, quickly measure that one too and you can see it's holding pretty good still with uh, one LED now we'll put two of them in series and so we can uh, we can bypass them both bypass one now we got uh, both 
of them uh, lit up. We're not bypassing any. So 7.8. And uh, we'll see if another one throws that off. That's all I have here right now. And there you can see the voltage or the current dropped quite a bit because they're blocking a little too much uh, voltage. So this one's just, it probably got abused at one time. It's probably just not as bright naturally anymore because I put th too much current through it at one point. So that's not why we had less current. I'll uh, swap, swap places there. And uh, you can see uh, it still looks a little more dim, but uh, the uh, order of them was not the reason for the uh, current drop. It's just that they're blocking a little too much voltage for this power supply to uh, keep current that high with this particular setup. A higher voltage would be able to light up more LEDs with this same setup. But in uh, any case, uh, that's really about it. So it's really nice. You can program a certain current as long as it's on this side of the transistor. You could use a PNP transistor for if you wanted the transistor on the more positive side of the circuit. Then it would be on the uh, negative side where you would have the current set. But in this case we're setting it with the transistor on the negative side so it's set on the uh, more positive side based on the transistor. So hope that all made sense. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.